Oklahoma Memorial Stadium. It's the number four Oklahoma Sooners and the Catamounts of Western Carolina. Alex Grinch was more specific, saying the laundry list of negative outweighed the positive. He told us and he told his team, you're not at Oklahoma just to be okay, guys. Especially with a crowd, haven't had a crowd in a while. Uh, look for them to improve, especially up front on the defensive line. Rogan Wells, an experienced quarterback, is under center in a wishbone formation to start this game. That'll make Oklahoma fans happy. They shift. Now an empty backfield. Play clock nearly expired. Wells across the middle, and it's dropped. It was T.J. Jones out of the backfield. So Rogan Wells, he's a double transfer from Tusculum and Valdosta State, where he and head coach Kerwin Bell won a national championship, Chuck, in 2018. And he, he's, he's an excellent passer, but he can run the ball, too. He, he rushed for 67 yards last week. So he'll, he, can, he can move the ball with his feet as well. T.J. Jones flanks him to his left. Jones gets the carry. He darts for about eight yards. Isaiah Thomas comes down the line to make the stop for Oklahoma. Yeah, look look for Western Carolina to go really quick with their offense, trying to tire out that Oklahoma defensive line. And they just ran a little outside zone for, for a nice game. Make, make it third and manageable. They have to do that all day to stay in this game. And Coach Kerwin Bell's son, Cade, is the play call for the Catamounts. C.J. Williams motions. Rogan Wells lets the play clock run down to about 11. Dumps one across the middle. Caught. It's C.J. Williams sprinting across midfield into Sooner territory down to the 46 where DeLaren Turner Yell drags him down. A first down. Yeah, the Sooner defense is playing a lot of man early, and they got caught in their man coverage last week against Tulane with the crossing routes. And here's the crossing route to, to Williams, and they just they couldn't keep up. The corner just got picked off in the middle. Those crossing routes can hurt man to man. C.J. Williams originally signed with Alabama, didn't play in 2020 as this ball is incomplete. Out of bounds, Woody Washington providing the coverage out there on Terrence Horn. What I saw last week at, at Tulane, they were trying to pick on Woody Washington early. And that was a nice play by Washington to break up the little out route. Second and 10, Sooner 48-yard line. Jones motions out, leaving an empty backfield. Logan Wells has time now pressured off the edge. Steps up and goes down in a heat. Pressure came from Isaiah Coe, making his second consecutive start. And in the middle, Josh Ellison. Yeah, that was a covered sack. Great call by Alice Grinch. Went going from man to zone here. This is a full zone. That little twist up, up front confused the offensive line. But nice zone call by Alice Grinch to cause some confusion on the quarterback Wells. It's a loss of three. Third and 13. Catamounts back in their own end of the field. And the play clock's already at 12 as they finally get the ball set. Crowd worked into a frenzy. And a big third down to start this game. Oh, you showing zone defense here again. Wells back up a couple of times, setting the play. Play clock is at one. Barely got it off, and that pass off the fingertips of the intended receiver, Calvin Jones, and a fourth down. And they had Calvin Jones open on a quick slant. Not sure if there's miscommunication there, but he they, nice job by Will. They, they had him on a quick slant. Didn't really expect the football. If he catches that ball, he's going to get the first down. Marvin Mims back deep to return the kick. D.J. Graham had the coverage for the Sooners. Whistles are blowing out there. Western Carolina is set to punt it away. It's Brandon Dickerson, sophomore punter. Mims back at his own 15-yard line. Derek Anderson is our referee tonight. Working the kinks out still, Chuck. <laughs> it's a high short kick, and it sails out of bounds. We'll see where they spot this, but that went off the side of the foot of Brandon Dickerson. Mims not even having to 
field this one, and the Sooner offense will start. Time to check out our Riverwind playbook for Spencer Rattler in the Sooner offense. Chock full of weapons, Chuck. What's in the Riverwind playbook tonight? Well, he obviously had a great year, finished the year off strong last year. You see his percentage, I was looking for percentage, and then touchdowns, interceptions, and just had a tremendous year. And I, I expect him to have that kind of year as well this year. This is Gray darting back inside the Tennessee transfer. Able to muscle his way out to the 40 for a first down. Starting off with an inside zone, Eric Gray. I'd like to see him get more touches tonight. Only got nine last week against Tulane. Start, see what that Tennessee transfer can do. But nice job of patience there, letting the blocks happen. Sooners going quickly to pass to Mims across midfield and shot down out of bounds at the 41 yard line by Charles Gaddy. Sooners move the sticks on their first two plays. Yeah, they're going really fast here. That was a nice little movement pass by Spencer Rattler, just moving, moving his pocket a little bit. He's really accurate on the run. He really impresses me when he's on the run, getting outside the packet, pocket with his accuracy. Mims caught five for 117 yards a week ago. Stopping and starting and cruising for another first down goes Gray. He rumbles out of bounds at the 35-yard line. You could tell in their game plan they want to get Eric Gray going early in this football game. Nice stop and start there to the outside, and Western Carolina didn't have anybody on the edge, and Gray took advantage of it. Sooners, two first downs on the drive. Swing it out quickly. Michael Woods, the second, the transfer from Arkansas. He gets shoved out of bounds by a host of tacklers. Andreas Keaton and Cameron McCutcheon lead the charge. This is a big transfer the Sooners got from Arkansas. Three-year starter there. Yeah, they, they've got a number of transfers. I thought they really did well in the transfer portal this year. As good as anybody team in, anybody in the nation. Three Tennessee transfers. and Woods a big part of things as Rattler checks with the sidelines. Gray joins him in the backfield. Sooners moving quickly. This drive started. About a minute and a half ago, Rattler, a strike to Mims at the goal line. It's knocked away by Charles Gaddy and an incomplete pass. They say he did not complete the catch. That was a great play by Gaddy because that was a nice little post route. Really should catch that ball, bring it in your, in your gut. Spencer's staring a little bit at, at the receiver, allowing Gaddy to come over, though. He's got to look that, that, re, that defensive back off, that safety off, so he can get that post route in there. Sooners third down and six. Plenty of time for Rattler across the middle. Austin Stogner with the first down, and he's dropped at the six yard line by Jacob Harris. Big target, 6'6, 251, Junior Stogner. Always love those tight ends, Chad, especially over the middle when you need them. Quickly up to the line. First and goal from the seven yard line, and Gray is bottled up. Quickly shut down. Cameron McCutcheon, a transfer from Gardner Webb. Spent three years there. Was able to contain Gray. And they are going fast right now, just trying to tire out that Western Carolina defensive front. Sometimes when you go really fast, Chad, you're going to take, you're going to get a bad play every now and then. You just have to live with it. See the Tennessee transfers: Gray, Wanye Morris on the offensive line for Bill Bedenboe and Key Lawrence, who we'll see on the defensive side tonight. Some key ingredients: former balls. Second and goal from the Western Carolina seven. Big handoff and a slant pattern caught touchdown. It is Jaden Hazelwood. And Oklahoma strikes first. And he's your big target, especially inside the 20, because he's 6'3. That's his little RPO, fake to the running back. Backer sucks up. There's Hazelwood on a little slant route. Everybody has that play in the playbook nationally, but Oklahoma really knows how to run it. Hazelwood missed six games with injury a year ago, but back healthy and figures to be a big part of this offense. Eight plays, 70 yards on the drive. Gabe Burkich adds the PAT. Jaden Hazelwood, big target, big play early. Sooners lead 7 0 early on in the first quarter. Manager. Jaden Hazelwood catching the touchdown pass. He caught one as a freshman two years ago. Burkich's kick sailing into the end zone. Western Carolina back out. They picked up a first down, but punted the ball away on their opening drive. Defensive turnaround. So many ways that you could point 
third down conversion percentage for their opponents and turnovers not seen here. The improvement has shown on on graphics like this, but more than anything, it's shown on the field, Chuck. It is, and I like that third down percentage there. That's that's really key to good defensive football, getting those guys, getting your team opponent off the field. That and turnovers, as you mentioned, Chad, are huge, and they've improved in every way. Kenny Benjamin in the backfield this time. Gets it, nowhere to go, and he's swallowed up. Drops from behind. Coming down the line was Jalen Redman, back in a Sooner uniform this season after opting out a year ago. So far, so good with the Oklahoma defensive line. It was Ballyhoo coming into the season, and uh, they're, they're off to a great start tonight. No game, and a second and ten. Rogan Wells is on the same page with Cade Bell. They were together at Valdosta State and then last season at Tusculum. Whistles blowing, flags down. A referee tonight, Derek Anderson. Five yard penalty, second down. That's Mydrian Fines. It's called for the full start. Double transfer from Tusculum and began his career at Eastern Carolina, where he saw limited action. Not what you want if you're the Catamounts. Second and 15, back at their 20. Wells fires high and over the hands of his intended receiver, tight end Clayton Bardall, who was flexed out that time. There's the first year head coach, Kerwin Bell. Was Division II title winner as head coach at Valdosta State. And then spent a year as offensive coordinator at USF. Did not coach last year and wanted to get back in the game. He loves this type of an environment that the Division II level brings. He was a star player at Florida and a long professional career. He's done it the hard way. He's a walk on and earned his way at Florida. Now he's earned his way as a coach. He's been successful everywhere he's been. And there's no doubt he's going to be successful in Western Carolina. Just took over in the spring. Wells finds a release valve there in the middle. Benjamin. He's out to the 33-yard line. Brian Asamoa in to make the play for the Sooners. Yeah, they're very active right now up front. This front center for OU is good, and they are very active. And right now, Alex Grinch is playing a lot more zone to let them play a little bit faster. They got picked on the man coverage. Ooh, that ball came out. There's that turnover opportunity they wanted again. But to play a little bit more zone and allow that old defense to play a little faster and settle into this game a little bit more. It was Danny Stutzman, freshman, that got his hand in there to strip that ball out. Mims signals fair catch and takes it at his own 27-yard. Some of our nation's biggest cities. We remember Kennedy Brooks breaks outside and is across midfield to start this drive for the Sooners. Kennedy Brooks, his first carry of the night. He had a 6.2 average against Tulane last week. He is a big playback, and he's got great second-level speed. He gets through that first level, his speed picks up. Sooners go quickly on the Western Carolina 40. Rattler takes it himself, tripped up after about a three-yard game. And that was not a design quarterback draw. There was nobody open down the field, and he thought he had a chance with a big hole up there to, to make some yardage and got tripped up. He is really not known for his running ability like other quarterbacks that have been here, but he can move around, and he's really good throwing on the run. Here's, our, Ke here's Kennedy Brooks. He's our Coca-Cola key player. 87 yards rushing in his return a week ago after opting out in 2020. Rattler quick strut dropped by Hazelwood at the 21-yard line. Yeah, that's a rare drop. That's he, They went back to that RPO. Reading the linebacker, linebacker bites on the play fake, and they throw to Hazelwood on the quick slant here. He just took his eyes off the ball. He saw a defender come and took his eyes off the ball. So the Sooners face a third down seven. At the Catamounts 37-yard line, Mario Williams is split out wide to the right. A talented freshman, Rattler, plenty of time to throw. Now pressured from the edge and tackled. From behind, it's Ivan Hogan's, who had two tackles for loss a week ago. 
Rattler's able to get back near the line of scrimmage, but it's fourth down, Chuck. Yeah, Western Carolina showed a cover two, and then at the snap, they rolled to a cover three single safety defense. It confused Spencer Rattler. That was a good defensive call by the defensive coordinator, Justin Hines of Western Carolina, on a third, on a crucial third down. So Gabe Burkich, who booted three field goals of 50 plus a week ago is out for what will be a 55 56 yard try from the left hash Burkich, plenty of leg Gabe Burkich has done it again four field goals of 50 plus for a budding star and one of the front runners for the Broza award already money <laughs> He had 16 points last week and saved the game. Here it is. Money Burkich. His first two have been touchbacks. This one is a little bit shorter, though. Returnable. It's Terrence Horn across the 20 and whacked down at the 25-yard line. So now we will see if the Catamounts can mount anything offensively. Sooners forced to three and out on their last possession. Rogan Wells, a sweep this time. T.J. Jones trying to hit the edge out to the 30 where Brian Asamoah tracks him down for the Sooners. Yeah, Brian Asamoah is all over the field early in this game. And they are very active up front. Uh, really came out with better energy than they did last week. You could tell that they had a hard week of practice. It was uncomfortable, as you said, Chad. <laughs> Chuck, when coaches say that's on us as coaches to get our guys to play better, you know you're in for a long week of practice. Yep. This pass is behind the intended receiver, Calvin Jones, and it's nearly intercepted by Asamoah. Yeah, just trying a little pick play, but right now, Oklahoma's defense is playing all zone. They've settled into the zone defense right now, gotten away from their man-to-man. -man. It's... Confusing uh, Western Carolina. Sooners had three takeaways last week. They had 16 interceptions last season. That was third most in the country. Third down and six. Catamounts. Sooners show blitz with Asamoah, but back off. Wells steps up, has plenty of time. He had a receiver. Chuck, I don't know. Rafael Williams almost looked like he took his eyes off the ball. He did. It was underthrown a little bit by uh, Rogan Wells, though, and, and, and he's not comfortable in the pocket at all against this ferocious defensive line that's breathing right down his neck. And he just underthrew a little seam ball to Williams. Of course, coach is talking to him about the seam ball, but just underthrew a little bit. He's, uh, Williams saw that safety coming over now. <laughs> Marvin Mims back deep once again. Hasn't had a chance on the first two punts. This one a little better effort. Mims from his 32 yard line. Shakes him in. Mims approaches midfield. The flag is down. A 19 yard return by Marvin Mims. We'll see if it stands. Officials confer. During the, during the return, holding, return team number 12. That's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Oklahoma. So the Sooners will be backed up. A beautiful setting, the best in all the college football. Red and white stripes, in remembrance of 9-11 so far for Oklahoma's offense 10 points touchdown pass to Jaden Hazelwood and a Gabe Burkett's 56 yard field goal Rattler fakes the handoff to Gray as a man running wide open in the middle of the field it's Braden Willis one of those hybrid tight end H backs that Oklahoma has become so known for he's tracked down by Jacob Harris yeah really good on the move great touch by Rattler and he saved the throw he saved that receiver from getting hit by the, the cornerback nice touch Braden Willis Jeremiah Hall those H backs that catch the ball and block Austin Stogner throw him into the mix as well over the right side it's Gray down to the 20-yard line. 15 more for Eric Gray. 
Does he look a little more explosive tonight, maybe, than in the opener, Chuck? Yeah, they want to get Eric Gray going tonight, obviously. But great play calling by uh, Lincoln Riley. Nice balance in the offense between running and throwing the football. And it has a good mix as keeping Western Carolina off balance. Sooners already. 60 yards rushing. Gray has 42 of them. Out of the backfield, Gray wide open. He has his first touchdown as an Oklahoma Sooner, Eric Gray. From Spencer Rattler, 20 yards, and it's 16 to nothing. Yeah, just a little back out of the backfield, seam route, and Western Carolina just blew coverage. There's nobody on him. Good job by Spencer Rattler. Easy pitch and catch. First touchdown for Eric Gray as a Sooner. Obviously getting him, like I said a minute ago, they're getting him in the game plan early. Give Eric Gray some touches. Went over 100 yards rushing four times in a Tennessee volunteer and caught 30 passes. Here tonight, he has his first Sooner touchdown. The air raid for this offense is a bit of a misnomer. They will regularly go for 300 yards rushing and 300 yards passing in the same game. They've done it eight times since 2018. From the 25, Catamounts have to get something going on this drive. Logan Wells, receiver stacked to the right side of the formation and nothing happening. LaRon Stokes shoots right through. Part of that very deep and talented defensive line core that Alex Grinch has at his disposal. Yeah, Alex Grinch wanted to play 31 players again like last week, and he's rotating them in. It's, it's still a hot, it's hot. It was Isaiah Thomas, who was selected to be a team captain just yesterday. Nothing happening on this carry. It is Deshaun White. Everybody getting a the tackle. They had 23 guys last week getting tackles. They're on their way to that again tonight. Here it is just, just a lot of disruption up front. And Western Carolina has no answer right now. And they have guys unblocked to the ball carrier. Sean White had five tackles for loss a year ago. Made ten starts. Third down and nine for the Catamounts. Sprinting out wide right out of the backfield goes Kenny Benjamin. Wells finds Benjamin, has some space, but he is whacked shy of the first down out at the 33-yard line. A whole group of Sooners led by Jaden Davis making the play. Yeah, I really like the tackling right now. The tackling was subpar last week, but they are rallying to the football. Look at all those red shirts in that picture right there. And that's what you want as a defensive coordinator, get all those guys all 11 to the ball. Sometimes you don't get all 11, but you want to get eight or nine at least to that ball and in that TV picture. Fourth straight punt for Brandon Dickerson. Marvin Mims back to receive for the Sooners. Fair catch signaled four. Dropped, and we will see. Looked like perhaps the Catamounts got on that loose football. Nope, they say the Sooners. Marvin Mims able to correct his own error on the must punt. Those are the ones that really drive you crazy when you fumble off of that after a fair catch. Just took his eyes off the ball, but got right back on it. Good awareness. Just took it off the, his eyes off the ball right at the last second there. Yeah, look that ball all the way in. Can't take that for granted. Among all the other things Mims did last year as a true freshman, he was the lead punt returner on this team. The confidence to throw him back there as a true freshman a year ago. He's a big play receiver. You know, he averaged 23 yards last week a catch. Jeremiah Hall gets this handle. And the H-back rumbles out to the 41-yard line. Getting his NBA. Kennedy Brooks joins Rattler and gets the carry. He has running room, slips past a man at midfield, Kennedy Brooks at the 40. Brooks all the way down to the 21-yard line in Western Carolina territory. 37 yards for Kennedy Brooks. Okay, we have a flag on the field here. It's back at the 45-yard line, and we have an injured catamount. As they see back at the end. It's Andreas Keaton. Holding in the 64 offense. 
It's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, second down. Ronnie Morris, the Tennessee transfer to the guilty party. Yeah, you see his hands right there and on the outside of the jersey. You got to keep, keep your hands inside. That was a good call. You see him grab the defender there. Keep those hands inside, not out. When they, when the referees see him on the outside, it's a hold every time. You saw the patience of Kennedy Brooks. All those, this, this ball is coming back, but great patient runner. I just love watching him play because he knows how to set his blocks up. Second Sooner penalty of the night. And Oklahoma back to second and ten from the Sooner 35 yard line. Latmer to Mario Williams breaks a tackle. Williams was up the right sidelines and they rule him out of bounds just shy of midfield at the 49 to gain a 14 for Mario Williams. Yes, yeah, led, led the team last week against Tulane with six catches and he's a, he's physical even though he's 5'9". He's physical. He's a true freshman. He's going to be a great player here at OU. Mario Williams threw a pass last week. Yeah, he's he, a high school baseball player as well. He can run. He can catch. He can throw. Look for him on some of those reverse uh, reverses where he's throwing the football. Catamounts get pressure for the first time really tonight. And it's second and ten after Rattler throws that one away. They're trying to stem at the snap. In other words, they're showing Spencer Rattler one coverage and then at the snap showing him another coverage trying to confuse him. So far so good for Spencer Rattler. He, they're not confusing him yet. Kennedy Brooks joins him in the backfield. Williams across the 40 has the first down. Hit hard from behind and dropped at the 37 by Rod Gaddison. Yeah, that's the famous RPO that everybody runs. Is faked it to the back, read the linebacker, and throw the slant behind him if he commits to the run. 14 yards for Mario Williams. The quick screen, Hazelwood out of a tackle, slips inside another, and he is dropped from behind by Ronald Kent Jr. Jaden Hazelwood caught a touchdown pass earlier. The quick wide receiver screen to the outside. Sometimes they don't go for the yardage that the fans want, but what it does over time in the course of the game gets that defense running sideways and they tire out. You have to throw those wide receiver screens, whether they go for big yardage or no gain at all. Throw them out there and get that defense tired. Rattler, 9 of 12, 116 yards and two scores through the air so far. Second down and eight. Rattler, Williams, all alone, first down. Steps out at the 24-yard line, a gain of 11. Cameron McCutcheon knocked him out. Like what Spencer Rattler's doing, he's stepping into his throws. He's on the move here, which he's really good, but he's stepping into every throw. Last week, he was, did not do that with every throw. He threw off his back foot some and, and resulted in a negative. Now he's really stepping in his throws tonight. Lincoln Riley said he needs to trust it. Kennedy Brooks so patient leaves his way to the outside and picks up two maybe three yards escorted out by Cameron McCutcheon again. What's McCutcheon got about 14 tackles already. He's in on every play Chuck. <laughs> he is in every play. Only the first quarter too but he is all over the field. Clock rolling 40 seconds to play and a second and nine facing the Sooners. Spencer Rattler full command of this high-powered Oklahoma offense. Fake handoff. Looking for Drake Stoops, but couldn't get it to him. Rattler takes it himself and has all kinds of real estate. Inside the 10 to the 5. He spins to the goal line. He reaches across. Did he get in? He did not. Just shy and at the one yard line 22 yards for Spencer Rattler. Yeah heads up play There's nobody nobody open everybody's covered bought a little time saw the opening took off He needs to tuck that ball and don't do this at the end Just tuck that ball Get on down. You don't want to take those hits either as a quarterback We saw a shake We saw a roll <laughs> Rattler denied the touchdown though what a productive offensive first quarter. 235 yards and 17 points for the Sooners. And the defense forcing four punts. Jaden Hazelwood into the end zone. And it's all Oklahoma after one quarter here in Norman. And Rowdy. 
First time since November of 2019. Full attendance allowed at the Palace on the Prairie. Kennedy Brooks bolts into the end zone, and Oklahoma has punctuated with a fourth scoring drive tonight. That was just a straight ISO play right with a guard pole, right down to shoot. Give it to Kennedy Brooks, who is really a good short yards and goal line back. Keeps his pad level down, good leg drive, and he's tough. Nice what, drive by Oklahoma. He's not the biggest, he's not the fastest. What makes Kennedy Brooks such an effective runner? Well, he's just very patient, he knows how to set his blocks up. Uh, he, and when he gets to that second level, he really gets going. He, his speed is really good in the second level. Very deceptive. Gets you a little bit more with that leg drive. And he's good. He makes the first player miss, and all good running backs should do that. And then he keeps his legs going on contact for that extra yardage. So the Sooner offense is rolling. Alex Grinch talking about that. We don't rotate just so you can get a breather. We rotate so you can play hard every snap defensively. And that ball is dropped. Caleb Kelly has picked it up. The super senior recovers yet another fumble. And right now, Western Carolina is rattled. This defense is all over. He just dropped it. Wayne just dropped the ball. He had the completion, secured it, just dropped it. And Caleb Kelly's right there to, to clean it up. What he's done academically and athletically. Derek Anderson renders our decision. After further review, the receiver never controlled the pass. This is an incomplete pass. It'll be second down, Western Carolina at the 25-yard line. So Rafael Williams gets a break. Yeah, he never had possession of the football, as we saw there. There he is, he's juggling it. He's trying to re reel it in and saw that OU defender. Got a little nervous, but no, never had it. Good call by, good call by the official. Good overturn. So second down and ten. Sooner 25-yard line. Wells, a little bit of time to find Jones. A little shake and bake, tripped up, out across the 32-yard line. It is Jeremiah Cradell. He has a, just a little dump pass to, to Jones out of the backfield, which I think they need to do more often against this relentless defensive front of Oklahoma. They're, they're coming off the ball. You gotta get to your backs a little bit, settle that, that pass rush down. Third and two from the 33. Cadamans desperately need to at least maintain possession here. That ball's a little short under throw, but it's not caught at the 39. Ruled incomplete. C.J. Williams, the Alabama transfer, could not hang on. Now, Rogan throw a little bit low for him, but he should have had this ball. He needs to have it. Yeah, it looks like the tip of the ball came out, hit the, hit the turf. It's awfully close. It's awfully close. Ruled incomplete. Catamounts will go on fourth and two from their own 33-yard line. And they will not get it. Shooting through to tackle Jones very, very quickly is Ethan Downs, an early enrollee, true freshman. He was around for spring football in a big play. Yeah, he just, no one blocked him. He came right inside the, the tackle on Tyler Smith and he shot the gap right there, Chad. And nice play for the big loss on fourth down. Well, the Catamounts gamble, Sooners make them pay and now will the offense cash in sooners 12 first downs western carolina has won oklahoma 109 yards rushing and 127 passing rattler in the offense back out gray twists his way inside the 30-yard line trevor childress makes the tackle for western carolina Two yards for Gray. Yeah, both running backs, Eric Gray and Kennedy Brooks, are running with a purpose tonight. You know, Eric Gray only got nine nine touches last week, as I mentioned. He, hey, I want to make these count tonight. 
And Lincoln Riley said yes in fall camp. We knew we needed to pace ourselves with these guys. Kind of limit their touches and then have them ready to go for the duration. Nine straight games to open the season. Rattler escapes. And at the 20-yard line, he completes yet another ball. This one to Jeremiah Hall, the H-back, his second catch of the night. Yeah, OU's offensive line is really protecting uh, Spencer Rattler well and giving time to get his second and third receivers. Sooner first down, moving quickly. Hazelwood fighting his way for yardage, and a flag's going to fly in. As Rod Gaddison came over for Western Carolina. And Oklahoma is going super fast right now with their offense. Hard for Western Carolina to keep up. Trevor Childers may be guilty. After the play, personal foul, late hit, number 27, defense. That penalty's half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. That's yeah, Childers' little extracurricular activity at the end. You gotta keep your poise. That's a fifth year guy. They typically don't make those kinds of mistakes. Trevor Childers gives the Sooners a first and goal at the 40 yard line. Woods breaks a tackle and races into the end zone. Michael Woods, the second. And the Sooners are rolling. It's 30 to nothing early in the second. Right now, it's just a great mix of plays by Lincoln Riley. Just so much mix and variation that Western Carolina is just a little bubble screen to the outside. Good block on the outside. Easy touchdown. There's such a good mix of plays by Lincoln Riley. Western Carolina has no answer. They're not getting lined up and they're tired. And the Sooners aren't letting up anytime soon. Four plays, 31 yards, and a little over a minute for Lincoln Riley's offense. Revved up and rolling, 261 yards, and a 31 nothing lead. Number one overall draft pick. So got, he got a nice, a nice company there, but Spencer Rattler is flawless tonight. People around him, I mentioned the good receivers in the offensive line, and it's quarterback friendly, and it's, he keeps it easy and simple with his reads, but yet it allows you to execute as a quarterback in a great way. Reggie Grimes leads the charge on a sack of Rogan Wells. Perrion Winfrey got there as well. And Oklahoma is making life miserable for the Catamount quarterback. Yeah, Rogan Wells, is a, he feels like he's in a, a traffic jam right now. <laughs> a city traffic jam with all these guys coming at him. And, and this defensive line was challenged this week, and they have accepted the challenge. They're getting after it. A little bit of time on second and 18, but he has to take the short dump down on a receiver flashing free. That is Calvin Jones, who gets escorted out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Keep those throws short and quick right now against this fast and furious defensive line in the back seven. This O-line can't hold up right now, so you better keep it quick, just like that crossing route. This is Kenny Benjamin in the backfield. Kate Bell, the offensive coordinator's motto is play fast, score faster. But when you're playing fast and scoring none, the defense is out on the field a bunch. It's been the case for Western Carolina to this point. Is that thrown backward? It is not. It goes out of bounds. Too tall for Kenny Benjamin out of the backfield. Yeah, and Western Carolina's only rushed the ball for five yards. And that's, that's not a good recipe against Oklahoma's defense. you got to find a way to run the ball a little bit, take take the pressure off of Wells. His little swing pass, just, just a high throw there. Kept that out. you got to keep that right elbow that up there high. You know, you drop that elbow, and that's where that ball can sail. But Rogan Wells is feeling a lot of heat right now. Marvin Mims retreats, takes this at his 32 as a flag flies in. Marvin Mims tripped up as he sprawls out across the 45-yard line. Hogan's makes the special teams play. We'll see what the flag is all about. Back at 31 up. First down for the own 22-yard line. Been a big night for Eric Gray already. He takes this carry, sweeping outside. Now darts back to the middle. 
across the 27 yard line. KJ Milner makes the stop on Eric Gray. Offensive line coach Bill Beanbow really likes a pulling lineman or a tight end or a fullback to lead the way for those running backs. And there's someone pulling a lot up front. And they, they like that little play. And here it is again with that guard pulling with a little play action behind it. The pass might have been tipped. It was deflected by Marlon Alexander. And that's the reason it was thrown behind Cody Jackson. Yep. Tip ball got that big paw up there. Alexander transfer from Gardner Webb. He gets the deflection. Sophomore from Smyrna, Tennessee. And a rare third down for the Sooners. Third and five. Rattler completes it this time. They go right back to the same well. This is a ultra talented and deep wide receiving core for the Sooners, as you might imagine. Yeah, just a hitch route on the outside. And what I love about Lincoln Riley is don't get bored with the hitch route on the outside. A lot of coordinators do. It's a boring route, but he stays with it. And, Sp and Spencer Rattler is really reading coverage as well because Western Carolina is trying to fool him on every snap with, with a different coverage. So they went right back to Cody Jackson. This time Rattler on first down and 10. Completes yet another one. This is Brian Darby with the first down. And he's a little bit slow to get up after being chopped down. So Brian Darby's okay. He took a hit right on the thigh board there. Just a little corner route to the outside. He took a shot on his thigh. Cameron McCutcheon's made a bunch of plays tonight. Looks like Brian Darby's okay. Sophomore from College Station, Texas. Had three catches last week. And just one catch all of last year. Yeah, moving the pocket with Spencer Rattler. So can't get a beat on him right now because he's not in the pocket every single time. Good mix of bootlegs and rollouts by Lincoln Riley. And he is on target tonight. Going really well. Setting those feet. Didn't set them last week all the time. He's setting them tonight. Grave alone set back again. Ten and a half minutes left in the opening half. Gray darts around the left side, across the 40. Weaves his way all the way down to the 27-yard line. That little draw trap play for the pulling guard. There's the pulling guard, and Eric Gray sets his blocks up really nice. And he's north and south. Then get east and west, goes north and south at the end there. 67 yards already for Gray, and on first down, he's able to push the pile down to the 24-yard line. And Lincoln Riley slowing it down a little bit, eating a little clock here, running the ball. Wants to eat, eat, eat some clock a little bit, use up some clock. And it's all a lot of run game right now. Gray gets a breather. Kennedy Brooks in. Eight carries, 70 yards for Eric Gray so far. Brooks has a touchdown run. This is a second and seven, and it's Brooks. Charges out inside the 15, picks up the first down. And they finally spin him to a halt as it was touching. Great job by Drake Stoops in the slot to get the ball. Nice block there on the, on the nickelback to get the play started. And of course, Kenny Brooks can read those blocks as good as any back in the country, cuts it up inside for a nice game. Nice block by Drake Stoops. Eric Gray is back in. From the 14 yard line, sooner first down. Rattler, a little bit behind Stogner at the five yard line. That was the worst story he's had all night. <laughs> you know, he almost got it. Do it behind Stanger a little bit. I just like the way he's setting his feet and throwing the ball with a purpose tonight. So good to have Stogner back. He took a hit last year in the Kansas game above the right knee. Developed a strep infection. Hmm. And trainer Chris Watson had to rush him to the hospital in Oklahoma City. Spent 12 days in the hospital. He lost 35 pounds. And he's been able to put a lot of the weight back on. So just to have him back out there is a blessing. Sure is. 
Look at the stutter steps there by Gray. Decked at the 10 yard line. Very impressive there, Gray. Wasn't sure what Oklahoma had last week. I think we're sure now that he is a excellent running back with good vision along with Kennedy Brooks. They're going to be a nice one two punch this year for Oklahoma. Four yards for Gray and a third and six. Clock winding now. Great formation variation by Oklahoma. Good mix. Rattler up top. A great back shoulder throw. It's caught by Mario Williams. Super Mario and a Sooner score. It's 37 0. That was a heck of a throw by Spencer Rattler. As you mentioned, the back shoulder throw. They're really hard to defend. They're almost impossible to defend, actually. Good throw, had a little air underneath the ball, so Williams can adjust to it. I don't know how you coach that def defensively. It's just hard to, hard to stop. But it's got to be perfectly executed between quarterback and receiver, and that, that's what it was between those two. Ten plays, 78 yards on that drive. He Spencer is reading it really well, and it's not fooling him. This Burkitt's kick is returnable from just shy of the goal line. Caleb Kelly comes up to make the special teams play on Calvin Jones. All the guys he would throw out here today, the one guy he wasn't worried about was Rugen Wells. But it has been a chore for him in the opening half, and his wide receiver got held there. Yeah, that's going to be a hold on Oklahoma there. And that's Joshua Eaton, who looks like he's hurt. Going to be the guilty party. See his right hand is casted and he's favoring it. Prior to the pass, holding number one defense. That's a 10 yard penalty, results in an automatic first down. Hard to play defensive back with a cast on because you use your hand so much. So Joshua Eaton, the sophomore from Houston. Four star guy coming out of high school. Played five games a year ago for Alex Grinch and Lincoln Riley. That's the second first down of the game. By penalty for Western Carolina, though. This time Wells will swing it out to Jones, but it's overthrown and incomplete. And the pitter patter of footsteps from David Uguaybu might have been heard. Yeah, Jones saw, saw him coming in his vision. Actually, that's a good drop there. Yeah, you know, he would have got. Yeah, that was a business decision, right there. That was there. a business decision, right there. They, he would have been, it would have been for a loss if he caught the ball. Yeah, David Aguebu is 6'4", 251. I'm not sure his footsteps go pitter patter. And here he is out in the flat, turning this play inside. Terrence Horn, the receiver, is only able to get about a yard, and he's knocked out of bounds by Justin Broyles. But great containment out there by Aguebu. Yeah, Aguebu is. Really running into the football. Look at all those Oklahoma Sooners running there. And as you mentioned, he turned it in, he turned, kept it outside, and he kept it from going back inside. And he used the help of his uh, defensive backs to make the play. So third and 10 from the 41 yard line. They get Wells some space to operate. He completes the pass, but it's well shy of the first down as TJ Jones pulls it in. Uguibu chases him out of bounds. I'm surprised they're not doing more of that with Rogan Wells rolling them out a little bit just to get outside the pocket against this relentless defensive rush. And a flag down behind the line of scrimmage. Offside, number four, defense, lined up in the neutral zone. That's a five yard penalty. We're going to replay third down. You get out there on the edge. And you're playing press coverage, Chuck. Sometimes you line up in the wrong spot. Yeah, you get too close. You got to back off. You see him at the top there. Yeah, he's over. He's over. he's in the neutral zone there. Easy to do sometimes when you're outside. And you want to get in that up in the face of that receiver. Catamounts one of seven on third down. This is one of the more manageable third downs they've had there. Third and five. Brown comes to life and a timeout. Just wanted to walk away being proud of the way they've played this season in honor of JP. 
Yes, thank you, Leslie. Moment of silence prior to the game in honor of John Peacock. Right at the first down stick. This is going to be close. Complete to Mydrion Vines. And looks like they will move the sticks. Catamounts, a couple of first downs on this drive, able to sustain. Yeah, getting the ball out quicker. From the Sooner 49, Wells working quickly. Pressure off the edge, caught up the middle. Perion Winfrey pounces on it like a big cat. It's been all zone coverage for Alex Grinch's defense since the beginning of the game. He tried man-to-man -man early, didn't work. He went to full zone and about zone every play. Allow that defensive rush to get there. That was a good cover sack right there. The back end was solid. Allowed that defensive front to get there. Here right, Winfrey. Winfrey, second team all Big 12 a season ago. And the sack. Loss of a yard. Wells, heavy pressure. Does well just to get that ball away. It's good to see uh, Perry on Winfrey active tonight. Uh, Alex Grinch told us he played too high last week. Needed his pass to get down. He's doing that tonight. A nice catch. Nope. Mm -hmm. Clayton Bardall. Yeah. Delarian. Nope. Delarian Turner Yell on the stop. We're going to have a look at this one, Chuck. Doesn't look like it. Delarian Turner Yell had 10 tackles for the Sooners last week. T.J. Jones sprints way out wide near the sideline. The pass is a screen. It's pulled in by Williams. Tripped up. 43-yard line by Denny Stutzman. Getting a lot of playing time tonight is the freshman. You see the rotating Oklahoma defenders in, trying to give everybody a break and keep them fresh and play those 31 defenders as Alex Grinch wants to do. So on fourth and four, the Catamounts will go for it. The Sooners turned them away on an earlier fourth down. Back deep in their own end of the field. Pass out into the flat. Excellent closing speed to make that play by Deshaun White. Benjamin pulled down shy by a yard. And again, the Sooners turn the Catamounts away on fourth down. Yeah, Deshaun White, nice play, nice open field tackle. Tackle's been solid, trying to stretch out. Looks like he was out of bounds before the stretch. And I believe we have a new quarterback. Nope. nope. Spencer Rattler still out there. Kennedy Brooks trying to hit the edge, but he stopped. KJ Milner got him from behind. That was the best defensive play they've had against the OU rush game. This little outside zone, they sniffed it out. They Good, good penetration by the defensive front. Loss of a yard, second down 11 from the 39. Under four and a half minutes left in the opening half. We're going to have the newly minted Hall of Famer coach Bob Stoops in the booth at halftime. That's a dark, complete. Speaking of Stoops, there's Drake with his first reception of the season. Didn't play last week. And, and Western Carolina brought a blitz off the edge, and Oklahoma blocked it up. Look at that time that Spencer has a nice nice throw to Drake Stoops son of the College Football Hall of Famer that we're going to talk to at halftime. Yeah, you two fellow Hall of Famers I'm going to just <laughs> leave the booth and turn it over to you guys <laughs> Kennedy Brooks in the backfield first and ten for the 47 yard line Rattler dances darts and dashes Spilled at the 40 yard line by Ty Harris. Offensive line, both homers doing a nice job with that pocket. Good coverage down the field by Western Carolina, and Spencer couldn't find anybody. Did the next best thing. I always say, hey, if you have to pat your feet three times in the pocket, that's when you need to run. And the best way to run for a quarterback is up inside the pocket. You get outside, then you get the losses with the edge rushers. Rattler's got four carries for 21 yards. He throws this one a little short and behind. And he did not set his feet. That's where every now and then he'll do that. He won't set his feet properly and get his hips around to make that throw. He wants to throw a little bit too early without his feet being set. Lincoln Riley's probably saying that, hey, set your feet. 
Because he had he had the slant. This is Sooners rare stoppage of the clock on this third down and four. He's really targeted Cody Jackson quite a bit here in the second quarter, but behind him that time. Ball a little bit high, but caught by Braden Willis. Rumbling inside the 15 and down to the 12 where Micah Nelson finally spills in, but 29 yards to the H-back. Nice toughness by Braden Willis. He's a high throw. Good job by Spencer buying some time. Good throw on the run. Nice high catch and the yards after the catch. They didn't get a lot of that against Tulane last week, the yards after the catch. And that's what it's nice yards after the catch there, and that's something they, they need to have as the season unfolds. This Paycom first down for the Sooners is their 21st of the first half. They hand off to Brooks out in the flat. Jackson pounds his way inside the five. Charles Gaddy on the tackle. And Braden Willis had a nice block on the outside. You got it. You have to get the screen pass or the wide receiver screen pass started is what we used to coach. Get it started and it just starts gets it gets started with that first block. And Braden Willis had a great block to get that thing going. Jaden Hazelwood onto the field late, replacing Cody Jackson. Sooners go on second down and three. They can pick up a first down down at the three. Kennedy Brooks joins Rattler in the backfield. One-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. It's Mario Williams up there, and Lincoln Riley walks over and takes a timeout. He is 23-2 here at Gaylord Family, Oklahoma Memorial Stadium. Minute 58 left here in the opening half. Kennedy Brooks and Jeremiah Hall flank Rattler on either side. Rattler for Hazelwood at the goal line. He's in for the second time tonight. Touchdown Oklahoma, the big target. Jaden Hazelwood bulls his way in. And Oklahoma leads 44-0. He is an excellent inside the 20 receiver down there. Just because he's 6'3", he's a big target. Just to, there's your face stop, your back shoulder throw again. Perfect timing, perfect placement. And Hazel with strong hands to the catch point, but you like those six three receivers down there. You match them up on smaller corners, and that's a that's that's tough on a defender. PAT by Burkitz is good. 45-0 Oklahoma. Eleven different receivers have caught at least one pass tonight. Yourself worked on it this week. And he also has that laser focus that Lincoln Riley wanted tonight. You could tell that his body language and his demeanor is a lot different. Calvin Jones trying to make something happen in special teams. Patrick Mahomes got a couple of Sooners clearing a path for him up front. Reed Humphrey drafted mm -hmm. out of Oklahoma. And Orlando Brown traded there in the offseason. This is Kenny Benjamin, and he gets decked by Delarian Turner yell they call him DTY that looked like some TNT <laughs> from DTY well he's the leading tackler last week against Tulane with 10 and very impressed with his leadership and the way he rallies to the football Wells in a hurry throws that one just wide of his target CJ Williams Ron Stokes getting some pressure yeah Stokes had pressure on him. that's why that throw didn't make it he couldn't set he couldn't step into his throw So it's a third and six. Catamounts face the possibility of giving this ball back to the Sooners. Yeah, that's what you don't want. Just run your offense. You know, you can't worry about the score. Just try to get better in, you know, in the second half. And Benjamin joins Wells. He flips it to Benjamin. Nothing happening. Sooners had that one sniffed out from the get-go. Shane Witter. Provides the finishing touches from his linebacker spot. And the Sooners are really running to the football. You've seen at least eight or nine guys running in that football in that picture when the play is stopped. Witter and Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas, 13 tackles for loss a season ago. 
He had three tackles and a forced fumble last week. The IT department. He has a high motor, as Alex Grimm says. So, Catamounts are going to let as much time run off the clock as they possibly can. But punt it away with 30 seconds left in the half, and Mims will make a fair catch at the 35-yard line. Marvin Mims on the scramble. Tonight, he's spreading the ball out a lot better. But why not? You got to look for him first, right? Just one catch and one target tonight for Marvin Mims. But Spencer Rattler completes a pass to 11 different receivers and throws for 189 yards and five scores in a dominant opening half in Norman. Sooners, 340 yards of total offense. The defense allows negative four yards rushing and just 70 total yards in half number one. And a dominant performance thus far against the Catamounts. He has head coach Lincoln Riley. Well, Coach, a very balanced performance on offense. How did you keep their defense on their toes? The guys played well. You know, we had both both work and run game and throw game, really, from the beginning. The guys made some competitive plays. We played pretty good up front. Yeah, the defense has been okay, too. They have negative rushing yards. Anything you're not happy with in the first half? Well, I have a couple penalties, you know, that, that need to be cleaned up. But, you know, we were in this situation last week. We played a good first half. You know, we'll see, uh, you know, we'll see if our mentality is improved the second half. All right, thanks very much. What he's done... Mechanically, he's setting his feet a lot better than he did against Tulane. Sooners won the toss. They deferred, so they get the football to start. Half number two. Here is Caleb Williams out of Washington, D.C., Gonzaga Collegiate High School. More of a dual-threat quarterback, five-star quarterback, as you mentioned, Chad. Really anxious to see what he can do. Jaden Knowles is in the backfield as well, transferred from Southwestern Oklahoma State University. Impressive show by Spencer Rattler and the first team offense. And that ball a little bit wide, incomplete, and out of bounds. Let's look back at what Caleb Williams did last week in his debut. He had a little wildcat shotgun on the goal line and pretty easy play there with a pulling guard. Show a little bit of toughness there. Got to get a little bit lower, though. You don't want to take those shots on the thigh. The last throw he made just now, just a little bit late to the sideline on the rollout. This is just a keeper and full send for Caleb Williams. Knocked out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Well, you mentioned dual threat. That was definitely a threat. That's a threat, and that's what he can do, and that's why he was the number one quarterback in the country, can run in for a little, just a little read on the defensive end, and he keeps the ball. And he's off and running. He stumbles a little bit at the end, but shows some really good speed and power in the open field. But he did a nice job at that, reading that run option on the defensive end and kept the ball. 59 yards for Caleb Williams. Now wants to throw it. Shows you his nimble feet. Kind of threw that one into a dangerous spot and ruled out of bounds on that play. Yeah, he just, nice little scramble there. He threw the ball a little bit late, but he was rolling to his left and threw a bullet. And his feet weren't entirely set, so you saw his arm strength there. Very Co impressive. Cody Jackson, again, the intended receiver. Lincoln Riley wanted to look at some of these young wide receivers as well. It feels like they've been pressing for playing time. Jaleel Farouk, one of them. Certainly Cody Jackson, who's been targeted multiple times tonight. Williams on second and ten this time. Checks this one down short and complete. That is Jackson Sumlin, the walk-on son of former Sooner offensive coordinator Kevin Sumlin. I like what Williams did there. He was looking all the way to his left. Nobody was open. Came all the way back to his right to, to his number three receiver. And usually a young quarterback is going to one, maybe the second guy, but he went all the way to three there. That's impressive. So third and eight from the 14. Initial drive of the second half. Sooners leading 45 nothing. Williams, all kinds of time. And this is down to the three-yard line. Sumlin, it's a gain of 12 for Jackson Sumlin and Caleb Williams. Yeah, nice job again. Going to his number three receiver in the progression. Oftentimes, young quarterbacks, again, don't get that far in the progression. 
So far, so good for Caleb Williams. Very impressive start. Now, that offensive line gave him plenty of time, as you mentioned, Chad, to be able to do that. But going to a third receiver, young guy, pretty good. So you're so deep at the offensive line spot. Wanya Morris and Eric Swenson in there. Williams fakes the handoff, cannot quite get to the edge, and staggers down at the two-yard line. The old turf monster got him. Just lost his foot, and he had a chance to, to score a touchdown there by the pylon, the front pylon. Read it nice, had a lead blocker, and he just has to out. He got him right there. Just That's the old turf monster. Jumps up and gets you. It gets the best of us <laughs> on occasion. <laughs> Second down and goal from the two for Caleb Williams and the Sooners. Knowles darts over the left side, met at the line of scrimmage. He'll be wrapped up and pushed backward. It was Kareem Taylor, who had 10 tackles last week, making the play. Just a little inside zone and nice play by Western Carolina's. Did some push up front. Kareem Taylor transferred from Kennesaw State. It was two times all Big South Conference there. Third and goal from the one. And plunging toward the goal line and in is Jaden Knowles. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Well, Jaden Knowles just kept his pad level down, leg drive at the first contact, and there's your inside zone blocking. Not real square up front, but that was all Jaden Knowles right there. Keep those pads low. His pads were lower than the defense, and we're going to score. Eight plays, 75 yards, three minutes and eight seconds on that drive. Big 59-yard run for Caleb Williams that jump-started things. Yeah, nice drive by Caleb Williams. Good start. 52-0 Oklahoma. Place to be. Weatherman Jay. Lincoln Riley says they have fun with it. If the weather's bad at practice, they so the Catamounts, they've mustered 68 yards of total offense. Logan Wells, quick handoff. Jones cannot escape. Jalen Redmond helping to bottle things in along that Sooner defensive front. T.J. Jones is a transfer from Tusculum, where the offensive coordinator, Kate Bell, was last year. There are eight guys who transferred in with connections, either Valdosta State or Tuscany. Wells escapes, trying to get away from Redmond and just flings this one out of bounds. Yeah, and head coach Kerr and Bell, you know, you, you want those guys that you're familiar with, you've coached, and you could transfer now, so you take some guys with you. That's how you turn around a program fast. Said he will build it along the line of scrimmage, offensive and defensive lines. And no doubt he's going to turn around. He's going to do well. He's done well everywhere he's been. And Chuck, it was difficult. They played a fall and a spring season. Mm -hmm. Kerwin Bell got the job late in the summertime in July. Had about 20 days to turn this whole thing around. 20 days, and it's, it's been a tough year so far. Obviously, the loss of his old line coach. Flags fly on this third down. Ball start, number 69, offense. Five yard penalty, third down. Dylan Luther here, left guard. Little flinch. Dylan Luther's wondering, what did I do? <laughs> Wasn't me. Third and 13. Catamounts from their own 22-yard line. Heavy pressure and a sack. Winfrey helped jar the ball free. It's still loose. And it looks like Western Carolina falls on it. Clayton Bardall scampering back there to it. Winfrey, Isaiah Thomas, and Nick Benito nearly picked up the fumble. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't talked about Nick Benito all night. 
But man, they, Rogan Wells had no chance there. There was no blocking up front. And had no chance. Just had to hold on to the ball there. Don't don't make it worse. They're lucky to get back on it. I mean, this bunch is deep. Jalen Redman back this year. Isaiah Thomas already having a great year. They lost Ronnie Perkins to the Patriots in the third round of the NFL draft off that defensive line. Marvin Mims telling everybody to get away from this short punt that tumbles out of bounds well shy of midfield. Yeah, they're deep in talent and they want to preserve this shutout. Great night, a great turnout for you guys. I'm amazed, even with the score, your fans are still in the building. They're so excited. Uh, 130. Fifth straight sellout going back to 1999. And it's just a typical reaction for Sooner fans. They want to be back together. We had a, a great year considering what everybody went through last year. We understand the difficulty that COVID presented, but our student athletes, our coaches overcame a lot. We had six top 10 finishes, three runners up at the narrowest of margins, and uh, golf and men's and women's gymnastics. And of course, our women's softball team won the national championship. But we're, re we're excited to be back this year. That one light pole over there isn't cooperating with us. I think it thought that all games are at 11 a.m. So I uh, didn't know how to night games anymore. But as much fun as we're having tonight, Leslie, uh, we still have a bit of a heavy heart as we commemorate and think about the anniversary of 9-11 and all the people that lost their lives and all those that jumped to help in some way, shape, or form, first responders, our military, public officials, just people. And our president has been right on the cutting edge of things that helped this university grow through some difficult times. And uh, we're so proud of what he's doing. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, just 20 years ago today, which is hard to believe, but then COVID and everything when you became interim president and now all the things that you've had to navigate through, it's been a challenge, I'm sure. No, it is. And all of us, you know, this 20 year anniversary, all of our thoughts uh, are, are, are with the victims of 9-11 and their families and all of us have been impacted. Um, and, and, you know, speaking of hard work, it has been incredible. You look around today and we have a full stadium. And uh, that's a product of incredible work by so many people working so hard. Joe Castiglione's leadership, uh, he proves why he's the best AD in the country. Uh, and things are looking up. You know, we, we have the pack stadiums. Our entering class this year was a record size. Um, highest GPA ever in our history, most diverse class, 25% um, first generation students. So when we think about um, are we emerging from all of this? The answer is uh, yes, in an incredible way. Um, record year for donations, record year for research. Uh, so proud of this institution and everybody who's a part of it. Uh, grateful, and for our students, masking in class, doing a great job there. We were masked before we took on this interview. That's exactly that. right. We, we, we were and will be again after this interview. So many fans, it's so hard to hear down here. Of course, COVID has pushed a lot of things back, but you become official, right, very soon. It's taking a while to be official. There was a year of interim and now 15 months in this role. Um, but yes, we're doing, uh, we're doing some ceremonies this week. I'm incredibly grateful uh, to be a part of this. Congratulations. Thank you both so much for being with us. Uh, I hope you didn't miss anything. I'm sure you didn't. Pretty good game for OU so far, guys, and obviously they're in very good hands with both of these Joes. Thank you, Leslie, without question. Joe and Joe. Joe Square, a dynamic duo. That was a pretty dynamic throw by Caleb Williams as he was trying to reach Todd Hudson coming out of the backfield. Yeah, now your average Joe's indeed. And I I came here in 2000. And obviously, Joe Castiglione was the AD, and he had a vision and a purpose and hired a guy named Bob Stoops, took a chance because Bob was a defensive coordinator and probably you know, all the fan base, they wanted to go out and find a, a current, uh, you know, a head coach, someone that had a head coaching position somewhere, and he took a chance on a young defensive coordinator named Bob Stoops, and the rest is history. This is not Gabe Burkage, but Zach Schmidt, redshirt freshman out of Oklahoma City's Bishop McGinnis High School in a 39-yard field goal try. And it's right through the uprights. A 46-yard Zach Schmidt field goal. I believe I shorted him by getting after it up front. Had a rough night. Oh, Rogan Wells. He's, he's hanging in there. This is Benjamin racing toward the edge, but he ran out of real estate in a hurry. Sooners, Alex Grinch preaches speed, wants to recruit speed. Bryson Washington showing you that he certainly has some. Yeah, it's just hard to get on the edge on the so-called defense. It's so fast. 
Yeah, Western Carolina, just run your offense. You know, obviously the game's over. Mix in the run and pass. This time Wells completes it out in the flat to Kenny Benjamin. He's able to roll ahead for a first down before Brian Asamoah comes over to make the play. You always want to get to the edge in your passing game because that's where there's least defenders, safe throws, and a safe little shoot route, we used to call it. Out to the flat. That's where it's safest. Catamounts in a hurry. Turning this one back inside once again, Benjamin. We've been notified that the fourth quarter will be shortened to 12 minutes. Both sides have agreed to that time. So Oklahoma just continues to rotate the bodies defensively. Second down eight here. Wells a little bit out in front that time. You see again Bryson Washington on the coverage. The offensive line has given Wells more time. And the new offensive line coach, it should be noted, is John Cooper for Western Carolina. John played here at Oklahoma uh, when I was coaching here. He's one of our offensive linemen, center. He's now the new offensive line coach for Western Carolina. Just took over. And he was the 2008 Big 12 Offensive Lineman of the Year. Blocking for the Heisman winner, Sam Bradford. Wells. Drilled by Caleb Kelly, but completes the pass. It's going to be short of the first down, it appears, by a yard or two. But he's able to find C.J. Williams. Asamoah having a big night for the Sooners. Yeah, Asamoah is always a very impressive. Man. That was actually probably Rogan Wells' best throw of the night. He set his feet. He's getting some time up front now. It's a fourth and two. Catamounts will go for it. They are 0 for 2 on fourth down tries tonight. This one they will pick up. T.J. Jones has dealt a shot, but the chains will move. Good job. Good job by Rolling Wells. This little roll out here, putting the back into the flat. Oh, he took a shot. D.J. Graham there on the stick. Good job by T.J. Jones hanging on that ball. Fifth first down of the game for the Catamounts. Sooners have 25 as Benjamin rumbles across midfield and goes down in a heap. And now we're seeing you know, the ability to have so many interchangeable. That looked like a hockey line change for <laughs> Alex Grinch's defense. They, they subbed about seven guys there, Chuck. I was thinking, you know, you're going to spend a lot of energy running off the field. <laughs> Might as well stay out there, but. He likes to rotate him through. Second and six from the 48 yard line. Wells pressured again, but steps up. He can run a little bit, slides down. At the 46 yard line, Danny Stutzman came over to just make sure he got down. Boy, he avoided avoid the sack there. Just he had so much pressure up front, and they're twisting up front. And Oklahoma's D line's been doing that all night. Just a deep defensive tackle, defensive end twist stunt on both sides. and. Western Carolina's had problem picking that up up front all night long, but it is a third manager's ball, and they got a nice little drive going. Best of the night for the Catamounts, but it faces third and five from the 47. Now empty backfield, pass out into the flat. Calvin Jones trying to circle his way back. Lost the football at the end of the play. We'll see who has it. Sooners say they do. Oklahoma forces another turnover. They are swarming to the football. Boy, what a half it's been so far for Bryson Washington. He recovers the fumble. Marco Murray. So, so Marco Murray. Yeah. Calvin Thibodeau on staff. Calvin Thibodeau. We were visiting with Brian Odom, the linebackers all coach, right. all former Sooners, and of course, Kale Gundy, who stopped by before. <laughs> It's nice to have those guys uh, that played here come back. They know the landscape, the climate of OU football, what it takes to get there, and it's a good job by Lincoln Wright. But there's Joe John, and one of the great guys in the game, and always worked hard, and it paid off for him. I think sometimes you get a coach who didn't necessarily play the position that coaches that position, but Joe John played that position at Oklahoma in the NFL. He was good. Under four minutes left in the third. 
55 nothing lead. Caleb Williams under center. Beautifully thrown ball, and we may have a pass interference called on this play. Intended for Trayvon West. Looks like Rod Gaddison is going to be flagged. Impressed with the throwing ability of Caleb Williams. Yeah, he's a, see why he was a five star coming out of high school. Nice job throwing that fade to the outside. Maybe a little bit more air underneath that ball. Throw it out there a little bit further. Like his arm strength. Trayvon West, the intended target there. Rod Gaddison transferred from Georgia Military Academy. Drew the whistle. Jaden Knowles, who scored a touchdown earlier. He charges over the right side to the 20. Jaden Knowles sidestepping the sideline and into the end zone for the second time tonight. Weatherman Jay. <laughs> Clear skies, mostly sunny, and two scores. Perfect weather for him tonight. Here comes the pulling guard, a little trap play. And Jay Knowles does the rest with some excellent blocking downfield by the Oklahoma receivers. I'm really impressed with those receivers blocking downfield. Takes a lot to get the running back in the end zone, but Jay Knowles shows his speed to the outside. So Jaleel Farouk out there, mm -hmm. one of those freshman wideouts getting a good final block. A physical game by Oklahoma tonight. Very impressive. Zach Schmidt back for another PAT. And the Sooners up 61 to nothing. Booth, I was in, in an office right over here, coaching with Bob Stoops when that happened. Sooners have gone over 500 yards of total offense tonight. Receivers in the pass game, using your running backs, playing great defense. New quarterback in, it is Carlos Davis, transfer from. East Mississippi Community College and Fort Scott Community College. There you see the 6'3", 225-pound redshirt sophomore. Tough night for the starter, Rogan Wells, tonight. He will certainly have better days. He'll have better days. He's a good quarterback, and you know, Oklahoma's a really good football team right now, and he won't, he won't lose confidence. He just got hit as he threw that pass near the first down marker. It's complete to Jacoby Quillen. DJ Graham over there for the Sooners. And I think they may rule him about a half a yard shy. Well, Oklahoma has recruited length and athleticism back in the secondary. Yeah, they're taller than they have been in the past. No question about that. Nothing happening there on a little delayed handoff. Danny Stutzman, he's now got eight tackles tonight to lead the Sooners. Now this defense, as you mentioned, Chad, has a lot of depth, and they're, they have the best depth they've had up front. These guys remind me of back in the day when I was here with Tommy Harris, Dusty Dvorak, and those guys. Dan Cody. Dan Cody. And that, they have that kind of length and athleticism. This time, Eric Gray is back deep to return this punt. And he'll make the fair catch, tumbling back to his own 27-yard line. 11 a.m. kickoff, taking on the Sooners. That was sorted out from the beginning. Todd Hudson, there's not much that he could do. And to look at the Phillips 66 upcoming schedule for the Sooners. Get Nebraska, and then it's into conference play at home against West Virginia. Well, this is, uh, the schedule is very favorable for Oklahoma. Watching Texas way behind in the fourth quarter. Iowa State lost to your Hawkeyes today. You and Coach Stoops had a mini celebration. We here. did. We did. <laughs> That was a big game today, nine versus ten, and didn't really end up that way. It was a lot, it was more lopsided than I thought, but great victory for Iowa. Caleb Williams calmly avoids the pressure and spins out of bounds. 
Nice job, nice poise by Caleb Williams getting out of the pocket. And making a positive from a negative situation. You mentioned that Nebraska game, you know, the, that's all, that was always a huge rivalry, Oklahoma-Nebraska. I remember growing up with that, Chad, it was at Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving Day and our, our house shut down just to watch that game. <laughs> Don't knock on our door growing up nope. during that game. So fondly remember the 85 and 86 games. Remember the Keith Jackson tight end reverse here uh -huh. in 85, 86. He caught a one-handed pass. Beautiful catch out of the backfield. Full send for Jaden Knowles up the left sideline. Can he get in for the third time? Denied. This is a night that Jaden Knowles will not soon forget. Just a little wheel route, we used to call it, coming out of the backfield, and they, they lost them in man-to-man -man coverage there, and it's just a foot race. This blue coverage, Western uh, Carolina, but those swing routes are always nice to have in your back pocket, those running backs coming out of the backfield. Fourth quarter time for Lincoln Riley and the Sooners leading 62 to nothing. In the fourth quarter will be shortened to 12 minutes. We'll have it for you with Caleb Williams, the Sooner offense, and weatherman Jay, Jake Knowles in full control over Western Carolina. An abbreviated third period of only 12 minutes. Both sides agreeing to that here tonight. Welcome back with Chuck Long and Leslie McCaslin. I'm Chad McKee. Caleb Williams looking the part so far tonight. That's a strike complete to Jackson Sumlin. What's impressing me about Caleb Williams, he's looking one side of the field and coming back to the other side to his third option. Young guys don't do that. Of course, all these guys are growing up with sophisticated passing games in high school, but he's really impressed me the way he's scanning the field. Second and four from the nine yard line. This toss is just a little bit behind Todd Hudson. You just think about the quarterback lineage at Oklahoma. I mean, going way back, go back as far as you want, really. You know, Jack Mildren and Steve Davis winning national championships, Jamel Holloway, Thomas then, Lott. Thomas Lott, then the more modern era with Josh Heupel. Jason White, Sam Bradford, Landry Jones, and within the last six years with Lincoln Riley, Mayfield, Murray, Jalen Hurts, Spencer Rattler, and we get a glimpse of Caleb Williams tonight. And a huge hole for Todd Hudson to scamper into the end zone. Everybody getting in the act right now, just a little outside zone. Or, I, I, Inside zone rather that broke to the outside. Here's your inside zone broke to the outside. Good push up front. And everybody's getting in the act now, Chad. And what they what they're saying on the sideline right now, preserve the shutout. DeMarco Murray over there, great former Sooner, coaching running backs. Talk about street cred. That's He's a, got it with his players, does yeah, he? Not? That's a great hire because now you can get all those, you get all the living rooms, are all the running back nationally. Sooners rolling. They have rolled up nearly 300 yards rushing in a 69 nothing lead. And that will help you down the road with experience. You know, you having been a former head coach as well, you can reward a lot of these guys who are going to play on the schedule. Receivers have caught at least one pass. Seven different Sooners have at least one carry tonight. This is a keeper. And a pretty solid run by Carlos Davis. He's got good size to him. 6'3", 225, sophomore. More of a dual threat. Then Rogan Wells and getting a little playing time which again you want to get your backup quarter your backup some playing time especially your backup quarterback first down carry tackling's been solid for Oklahoma it's, wasn't wasn't great last week but it was it's been solid they are going down on first contact Demond Harmon on the play
the 38. Catamounts. Well, I mean, there's not much there along the line of scrimmage. Ron Stokes, the stop that time. Yeah, they're just penetrating up front. That's where it starts. Pushing that offensive line back, and there's nowhere to go. Stokes was the 2019 Big 12 Defensive Newcomer of the Year. And that's a throw and a catch as Shane Witter moving out in open space. Yeah, this Shane Witter is, along with the rest of the Oklahoma defense, is flying around that field and they're just fast to the side. It's hard to get hard to get on the edge of this Oklahoma defense. They're so fast, but it's the only chance they have in Western Carolina because they can't go up the middle line. Another third down and five for the Catamounts. Davis completed midfield. It'll be a first down. Struggling forward. Just enough room there. Whenever you're in a blowout situation, uh, obviously Western Carolina in this situation, you want, always want to try to end on a positive. Try to get a drive, try to get a score, just end the game on a positive going into the next week. And so far, Carlos Davis has impressed me. Staying in the pocket, throwing some strikes. Stop and start. Branson Adams gets whacked at the 47 yard line. I mean, belted in a big collision. There he comes in. Right, was, right on his arm. Jordy Mukes in there. Okay. Second and seven for the Catamounts. Davis completes another pass and an excellent tackle made out in the open space by DJ Graham. As he upends Raquan Heath. That was an excellent tackle in the open field. The shot low in his legs, and right now this Oklahoma team's tackling very well. And a third down and four now for Western Carolina. Pressure off the edge, and well out of reach of the intended receiver, but a flag down. Carlos Davis had to throw it too early, earlier than he wanted to, that Oklahoma pressure. Pass interference, number 22, the defense. It's a 15 yard penalty, results in a first down. Lincoln Riley not liking that call. Yeah, the only thing I can say is he's grabbing him low and then he wasn't looking back at the ball. I would say that's a good call. So Daquan Patton, the intended receiver there, that gives Western Carolina a first down at the Sooner 29-yard line. Preserve the shutout, Chuck. Getting close. Yeah, that's what they're saying on the sideline. They're yelling at him right now. Preserve that shutout. Carlos Davis has a man running open, but it's a little bit overthrown and incomplete. Oh, Carlos Davis had a chance for a touchdown there. Could just put a little bit more air on the ball. You gotta drop that into the bucket, Chad. You can't let that ball just go flat. You gotta get it up there high so it's dropping in a in a garbage can. Branson Adams was the intended receiver that time. I always, I always tell quarterbacks that the football does not go off the TV screen on a long ball, it's not high enough. It's gotta go off the TV screen. Sooner defense has given up just 122 total yards on the night. Trying to preserve the shutout. Davis escapes pressure. Inside the 20. Has the first down. Trying to high step. And the Sooners have taken it from him. Winter recovers it. Ethan Downs the strip. Shane Winter the recovery. Oklahoma takes over. Forcing their second turnover of the night. And their fifth of the young season. 7-13 left in the fourth quarter. Dominant 69 to nothing result so far for the Sooners. Caleb Williams back out there at quarterback. He's been the guy here in the second half. He's completed four of seven passes for 76 yards.
Looking up top. He's got a man open, but it's thrown out of bounds. As that ball was intended wide to Jaleel Farouk. It's time for a look at our play of the night. And how about a series of air comfort solutions plays of the game by the Sooner defense? Yeah, let's give that defensive line some love. They've been relentless tonight. You see all the pressure on the quarterback they've had. We had to give those defensive guys. Uh, and they've, they've had a great night. I mean, only 137 total yards for Western Carolina. Only 32 yards rushing tonight. And Alice Grinch said so the other day. Just Chad that they, that they needed four quarter relentless pressure and focus. And they've done that so far because they're pitching a shutout. Two more turnovers forced tonight. Five total this season. All of them fumble recoveries. No interceptions this year. I bet they'll come. Williams, plenty of time. That's Stodner. And they ruled this incomplete. Nope, it is complete, but he's shy of the first down. Sooner's first punt of the season. <laughs> that was Karsten Gross on the reception. And then, he's been stretching out for two games. Stay loose. And he unloads on this one. Again, getting multiple degrees at the same time. So, anytime you get a chance to do that, take advantage of it. And in addition to that, I mentioned that Caleb Kelly's pursuing his MBA. He has, he's going to have three degrees. Pat Fields and Jeremiah Hall are also pursuing their MBAs. Mm -hmm. Pat Fields is pursuing his MBA and his undergraduate at the same time. Extra year of because uh, of the COVID situation, allow the next year for guys to be able to do that. And they, they've taken full advantage. Catamounts watching the clock roll away. Five and a half minutes left. Davis under heavy pressure floats that one up, and that's caught. It was a nice job by Tyree Nelson, freshman from Atlanta. Stop and catch that over his shoulder. I'm impressed with Davis. He had the high step fumble, which was a big mistake, but I, he has really nice arm strength. Get that ball on a wheel route, puts it to the outside away from the defender, and a high ball to you give your receiver a chance to catch it. With pressure. Davis is intercepted. Washington headed back the other way at the 40. And Bryson Washington steps out of bounds with the third Sooner turnover of the night and the first interception of the year yes. by Alex Grinch's unit. And there's an interception there, Chad. And I'm not sure where Carl Davis was throwing this ball. Who he's trying to get it to. I guess he was trying to throw the curl route out there and did not see Washington underneath. There's your first interception of the year for Oklahoma and add to the turnover department. Now we're going to switch quarterbacks once again. This is Ralph Rucker in at quarterback. And Cody Jackson on the receiving end. So Ralph Rucker, the third Sooner quarterback of the night. We're watching out there just to see who might be available. Tanner Schaefer is not suited out. He's on the sideline, is Tanner Schaefer. So Rucker becomes the third QB of the night. There's Tanner Schaefer standing next to Spencer Rattler. And Schaefer would ordinarily be number two or number three in the pecking order. 
Doesn't have any pads on tonight. Just the headset. Rucker hands this one inside. There's just not much depth. Not many guys you can hand the ball to. Sooners <laughs> short on running backs. So that's a good thing for Todd Hudson and Jaden Knowles tonight. As Hudson gets another kill. Yeah, just get some playing time. And right now they're just trying to slow it down and get this game over with. And again, preserve that shutout. But you still want to give your young guys a chance to play a little bit. Hudson dragged down in the backfield. Darius Bell, the stop for Western Carolina as we move under three and a half minutes left. I was in a game here back in uh, 2003 against Texas a and We had 77 to nothing by the end of the third quarter. And Bob Stoops uh, was the head coach, obviously. And he said, hey, hey Chuck, uh, we, can't, we can't get to 80 points. Do you have, you know, what are we going to do? I said, well, what do you want to do? He goes, well, can you give it to the fullback? And we only had one fullback on the roster, J.D. Runnels. And I said, coach, we don't even have a fullback play. And he said, well, put one in if you can. So we actually put in a little dive play to the fullback, J.D. Runnels, and, and actually managed to run out the clock and never got to 80 points. J.D. would have scored if you had told him to. Yeah, I know. We were, we were just trying to get, the, get out of the game, and, and uh, we had to put in a play on the sideline. Jaden Knowles out of the game right now. Had a great night. Yeah. Sooners 339 yards passing, approaching 300 rushing. Balance has been outstanding. Todd Hudson gets the call. He charges for the first down. And down to the two yard line. Running backs are running physical tonight. And a lot of in inside zone. Everybody runs inside zone. It's a physical run. And You really want to find out who, what your running back's about on the inside zone play, see how tough he is. Yeah, those running backs are tough tonight. Running hard. Ralph Rucker, the freshman from Lucas, Texas, Lovejoy High School, at quarterback now. Hudson plows his way in for the touchdown. Good extra effort. Good pad level and leg drive by Hudson. Everybody getting in on the act. All their social media is going to light up tonight. Just again inside zone and really this is all Hudson here because there's two defenders right there meeting them at the point of attack. Second score of the night for Todd Hudson. Yeah, good leg drive. He and Jaden Knowles have combined for four touchdowns rushing. <laughs> Leslie McCaslin will visit with Spencer Rattler in the post game, find out what he thought of his night. It's a really practice as you normally do spring ball, summer, fall, and really <laughs> a fantastic year. In his last seven games, he was. 15 touchdowns and two interceptions. They're off to a really good start this year. And a lot of good teams coming up. More, more challenging than Western Carolina, of course, but still a great night for him. Catamounts will just likely hand the ball off and run the clock out. Sooners going to move to 2 0 with Nebraska rolling into town for 11 a.m. kickoff next Saturday. Roll rivalry. Rekindled for one night. One more play upcoming. Sooners, huge night. 624 yards of total offense. 347 through the air, 277 on the ground. Alex Grinch's Oklahoma defense going to push three more turnovers and a shutout of the Catamounts. 
An abbreviated fourth quarter set to come to a close. For the first time in nearly two years, a full Gaylord Family Oklahoma Memorial Stadium watches Lincoln Riley win his 24th game in this venue. 83,538 fans striping the stadium red and white in remembrance of 9-11 tonight. Final play. The Sooners win it, 76 to nothing. Lincoln Riley's team now 10 straight wins when you go back to last season. And an 0-2 start for Kerwin Bell, his head coaching team at Western Carolina. Pretty complete win, Chuck. Yeah, both sides of the ball are really good tonight. There's not <laughs> almost perfection really on both sides of the ball. Anytime you can pitch a shutout, it doesn't matter who you play. That's that's a, a huge feat. And of course, you had your young quarterback, Spencer Rattler, setting the tone along with his running backs, Kennedy Brooks and Eric Gray, set the tone early for a physical game. They had that laser focus all night long. This is the largest Oklahoma win since that game you talked about earlier, Chuck. Mm -hmm. Since 2003, 77 nothing. Sooners all time record is 82 points against Colorado back in 1980. So this approaches a lot of Oklahoma records. And a great night for Spencer Rattler as we send it down to Leslie. Thanks very much. Well, not a bad second half when you get to see so many of your young guys. Who stood out to you, and how pleased are you with their performance? Yeah, I was just glad that we, we were able to maintain our level of play. Our sideline was into it all night. Our young guys came in and did a good job. We had a couple turnovers defensively. We ran the ball really well the second half, even with the with the uh, younger group. So fun to see those guys get some time, get out here under the lights, and go play. You feel like they answered your call. I know the coaches were not pleased after last week, and you feel like they stepped up? We were definitely better, no doubt. Just our intent, uh, I think, on coming out here and playing four quarters no matter what. We're obviously going to need that going forward as, as the season progresses. Spencer Rattler, it's been a while, it feels like, since you played, but uh, you felt like coming in, you wanted him to settle in a little bit. Did you like what you saw from him tonight? Yeah, no, I did. I thought he was really committed to what we were doing, uh, patient. Uh, so I thought, he was, I thought he was much better this week. All right, thanks so much, Coach. Appreciate it. Good to see you. All right, thank you, Leslie, and thanks to Coach Lincoln Riley for spending a couple of moments there. They will celebrate briefly and start getting ready for the Cornhuskers. And this is such a, a good part of it. Only 25% attendance allowed with COVID restrictions last year, but a full house at the Palace on the Prairie.